The world of work is changing, but why is it changing? How is it changing? And what should you and your organization do about it? Hi, my name is Jacob Morgan. I'm a best-selling author, speaker, and futurist, and on this show, I'm going to help answer all of these questions. Join me as I go inside some of the world's most forward-thinking companies to tour their offices and interview their executives and employees. Welcome to the Future of Work. We're here at SAP's offices in Palo Alto. SAP is a giant company. They have over 74,000 employees around the world, over 4,000 employees in the Silicon Valley area alone. Of course, since it's such a large company, we can't see every single office space that they have, but we are gonna check out some of their offices here in Silicon Valley. We're gonna speak with some of their employees. We're gonna speak with their executive, Jenny Dearborn, who is their chief learning officer, and we're gonna learn what they think about the future of work. Let's go inside. So we're here at Building 8. We're going to get a tour of SAP offices by... Hi, I'm Raquel Finucchi. I'm the Facilities Manager here at SAP in Palo Alto. Um, this Building 8 is one of nine buildings on campus. One of our most recent renovations that we did along with the development organization, taking their thoughts and ideas and feedback on how they work and then implementing it into the workspace. So there are nine buildings total on campus? We have nine buildings total on campus. And how many employees do you have working here? Um, we have 2,500 assigned to Palo Alto, about 19 that come in and have a, an actual seat assigned. It's a lot of space. A it lot is of a space. lot of space. And a lot of different lines of business. Yeah. So it's not all development. We have you know, finance and administration, legal. So we have a variety of workspace types as well. Yeah. Cool. Well, we're yeah. looking forward to seeing it. Great. So come on in. Oh, oh sorry. <laughs> Yes, so just about every wall in the space is writable um, and you'll see why a lot more upstairs. <coughs> just to make sure. Just to just make, to make sure. sure. I've been writing this on every wall that's writable. Can you read that? My chicken scratch writing? <laughs> Yep. This is our oldest set of buildings on campus and one of the biggest changes was it needs to be highly collaborative, right? So it went from 69 inch high panels to a variety of work spaces, work styles are supported. There are no private offices, but there's plenty of private space. So why don't we take a loop around here and then yep. go upstairs. So basically facilities provided the infrastructure, right? The power, the network, um, the furniture was very basic. It was a desk monitor arm and a chair um, and then everything else they basically had to ask for and what that allowed us to do is reserve some of the furniture budget for them to create their space themselves and purchase their own items so as we walk through the space you'll see a lot more soft seating um, trying to bring the home into the work so why are some of the buildings more cubicle based and others are more open and it's just different work that you do has different yes partly and so, that, for example, the building you were just in is, it, we renovated it about six years ago, and that was pretty progressive for that time and for the job functions that went in there, HR, finance, legal, those types of jobs. It's not cheap to redo it. Exactly. Yeah. Um, but as we continue to renovate space, we're always pushing the envelope. Mm. So even with our f and functions now, it's a lot more open, a lot more collaborative, a lot less offices. Yeah, this is what like you would expect from a Silicon Valley. Exactly. Um, and these guys in particular are really pushing the envelope, kind of designing, you know, what's the workspace of the future look like? So you see these monitors where they're prototyping collaboration that could be global collaboration, but they just one day came to us and said, okay, I need to plug in 12, 24 monitors. How are you going to help us do that? So um, this type of thing happens all the time here. This is a surface. This is a surface um, that could potentially be in a boardroom. So, yeah. This is a computer that you can. Use. I wouldn't know how to use it, yeah. but <laughs> they do. Um, and in this space, you'll just see a lot more. Um, like I said, there are no offices. Everything's drop-in. So there's. It's all based on what your needs are for the day. If you have heavy conference calls that day, then you'll likely be in a phone room or so a meeting has room. An assigned no, nobody has an assigned, um, they have an assigned desk, yeah. so to speak, but no private offices for the senior executives. 
So even things that are traditionally um, very set. <laughs> that is. Even things like, I don't know if you're familiar with Cisco Telepresence, it yeah, does yeah. help us to limit the amount of travel we have. One of SAP's goals um, is to achieve our 2,000 carbon emissions targets by 2020. Mm -hmm. So we do have Telepresence, but these guys decided it needs to be standing. We need to have whiteboards all over the place. The room's a bit of a mess right now, but we built a platform for it so they could stand and they can whiteboard and they could still Telepresence with another location. Um, so just something that we again pushed the envelope with and the company wasn't, that company wasn't too yeah. happy with us. But That's pretty cool. <laughs> Do you find some people are um, wanting more of a closed space versus open space? You know, it's a, it's a fine balance, right? And so that's why you have to have a variety of space. So you'll kind of see a lot more stuff on walls around here. This is our um, design and co-innovation center and so they're doing heavy design thinking with customers solving their problems ma road mapping their futures so um, doing a lot of work with a variety of organizations that come in they come out here and whiteboard everything and and then go back to the customer and say okay this is what we're thinking and yeah. you know, give them that opportunity to um, really hear what the problem is and talk it through and we have a lot of spaces that don't have doors on purpose yeah. because we want people to overhear each other's projects because you could learn something from the other group. Perhaps mm -hmm. you're trying to solve the same problem, perhaps you'll hear a different way of solving the problem or coming to a solution. So um, It's kind of like you don't need privacy in a way. Right. You're all working for the same company and you all have the same goal of satisfying your customer regardless of who that customer is. Yeah. And then again, as, as we've kind of walked through here, you've seen that most of the bays, we call bays, are configured differently. We did that on purpose. We gave them the stuff, they arranged it however they wanted to sit. Um, it's just kind of the way things are going these days. I'll, I'll come into, this building never stays the same, but even in those spaces where it's the legal team or the finance guys, they're reconfiguring their furniture too. They want that flexibility. Um, they want to be able to sit in a beanbag chair and, and work or on a sofa, so. Yeah not just even the standard conference rooms anymore, but flexible furniture. I think this is a good example of allowing them to have that flexibility in the furniture budget. So you'll look at this space and it's very different than, you know, they have a lot more soft seating and TV watching. If they want, they could just move something around wherever. Absolutely, absolutely. Who are you and what do you do for SAP? Uh, well, I'm still Jenny from the block and don't be fooled by the rocks that I got. So even though I used to have a little, but now I have a lot, I still know where I came from. I feel like I should know the next line to that, but I really don't. I think that's it. I think that's, so, actually, that's all like, there is. I got nothing on that. That's all there is. Yeah. That's all. So aside from being JLo, what else do you do? <laughs> um, I'm Jenny Dearborn. I lead uh, the learning function for SAP, so chief learning officer for, for all, of, all of SAP, 75,000 employees worldwide. And so I understand that you painted these things yourself? I did. I did. They're a little bit of uh, superhero inspiration for me each day. Josh, are you able to get a shot of the... <laughs> There we go. So we can see the, the talent that people at SAP have. That's right. Have you seen the workplace change at all during the course of your career? Yeah, tremendously. So I've been in Silicon Valley for over 20 years um, in tech companies. And I would say the workforce was very kind of cubicle oriented, very hierarchical when I started, you know, way back in the day. And it's much more um, open sort of floor plan um, across all companies now mm -hmm. and less hierarchical, much more flat, um, way more design thinking and sort of entrepreneurial spirit throughout all companies now. So what was it like 15, 20 years ago? Is it literally just you sit in a cube, somebody comes out, tells you what to do, walks away and you're just kind of like your own? Yeah, it was very Dilbert, right? So people sort of, you know, sort of put their heads out of the yeah. cubicles <laughs> and look around like office space. I, I mean, that's really how it was 20 years ago. So those um, movies are not a joke. No, that's not a joke. Out. That's actually how it was. Oh, no, no, that's not a joke. That's a, that's a documentary. I mean, that's seriously, that, yeah. there's no joking there. 
<laughs> um, and it's very different now. I mean, it's um, it's it's mu there's so much more freedom for people to sort of entrepreneurial spirit to kind of come through and design the kind of work that they want to do yeah. and the kind of projects they want to do and who they want to work for. And there's so much more independence. Sure. Every employee. Do you think we're going to be working for one employer, or do you think we're going to work for a portfolio of companies and everyone's going to be a freelancer? Um, there's a lot to there's a lot to that. I still think that the employee concept will be strong in the future. So I don't think that everyone will be a freelancer. I don't think that everyone will be a contractor that will come and go from mm -hmm. from projects and assignments. Um, I, we will see that trend increase, and there will be more employees that want to do that moving forward, um, or you know, more talent that wants yeah. to do that moving forward. But I also still think that it's not going to you know, over rotate completely the other sure. way. Yeah. You know, so Not everybody's going to be a freelancer. Yeah, I, I don't. Th I, I think that we will see it go from ten percent of the workforce to twenty five, which will be significant, or yeah. maybe thirty five, or something like that. But it's not going to over rotate and be you know ninety ten the sure. other way. What do you think of millennials? Uh, I know that's a huge topic for a lot of people that are going to be watching this. Right. Um, you, you can't go in the media nowadays. And every article that you look at online and offline, everybody's talking about millennials. This millennial that. What do you think about millennials? Um. Uh, I have never met a millennial that I did not fall in love with and thought was incredibly passionate, committed, brilliant, oh, yeah. Praise talented. A not Woo. you, of course. <laughs> uh, we're not you, pal. Cut, but, we're, we're done. It's, we got everything we need. Not we're, my we're friend. Awesome. Yeah. <laughs> but um, I have been just blown away by the focus um, and. You know, every person I've met, I think, my God, if I was as smart as this person, you know, this person's 25 and is is blowing my socks off at how just focused and committed and great questions and, you know, sure. well-researched and all that stuff. And I think, geez, when I was 25, it's still a goofball, right? So, um... It's like the best interview ever, right? by the way, just so... Like. <laughs> but it, it's, um... It, it's absolutely blows my mind. So, I think there was a lot of hype about it, you know, gosh, seven eight years ago or something when yeah. you know the term was first uh, penned and and all of that and and we didn't really know you know we older folks I'm a Gen Xer in the workforce we didn't really know what what this new generation was going to be like and so there was a lot of speculation and a little bit of early research that was kind of blown out of proportion sure. and then you know the, the Millennials that come into the workforce phenomenal and yeah. you know are changing the workplace thank God and are demanding things that absolutely should be demanded and their voice is so strong and powerful because there's so many of them yeah. so God bless them I mean yes do the right things change the world for the better Woo! Woo -woo! are there a lot of outdated practices that you think organizations currently um, implement in their organizations that need to go away that Millennials are helping kind of push out of the way um, the focus on diversity and inclusion is... Used to not be a big thing. Used to be a nice to have, something that was mentioned, let's make sure we put a line it in the annual report, things like that, and now it is front and center. Mm -hmm. And that is fantastic. So I love that because I'm somebody who's very passionate about that and have been for a long time, yeah. but it wasn't a popular topic 15 years ago, hmm. right? It's it's front and center in every conversation, certainly here in Silicon Valley, so that's awesome. Um, you know, the focus on the actual um, environment, right? The workplace, you know, what the offices look like, how they feel, you know, the fact that we... The experience, yeah. the, the, the employee experience, the fact that we, here at SAP, we have our own vegetable garden and we use our own yeah. vegetables <laughs> that we grow here in our own cafeteria, and that's really important and that all of the food in our cafeteria is sustainably harvested from local sure. you know uh, farmers which is fantastic you know that that is something that is really important to that used to not be it used to not be the case nobody you know, cared about experience you just show up you show up as long as you have a desk yeah you know you do your whole Dilbert thing yeah. and you know everyone you know heads down and that's fine so why why is the employee experience so important now um, well, I think that it probably always was, mm -hmm. um, but the generations of the past did not have the voice to express that. And to be just because, you know, baby boomers were so large, Gen Xers were such a small generation, sure. we had these thoughts, but we weren't allowed to say them, or if someone said them, they're like, hey, kid, be quiet. Technology helps too, right? Right, Social exactly. Knowledge. Right. So, you know, so everything is social and mobile and the collaborative mm -hmm. learning, the fact that somebody grows up with a device in their hand and they're instantly connected to the outside world, that that's their expectation yeah. when they come here, which is fantastic. What advice would you give to an executive or a manager, uh, perhaps one of your peers, not necessarily at SAP, but another company, 
that's looking to create a great employee experience and to create an organization that's able to sustain as the workforce changes, what would you tell them to do? Um, ask. Have a conversation. Mm -hmm. um, have an open forum. Um, make sure it is a collaborative process where everybody's coming together and participating in that decision making. Do you think that employees also need to take a little bit more ownership and charge instead of just relying on a company or on a school to teach them everything that they might yeah, need? Yeah, absolutely. Know? I mean, they need to sort of step up and, and be part of that process. They need to say, okay, em employer, you know, what can we do together? And then also, and these yeah. are the things I'm doing on my own. So it's not just, you know, I look to my employer and then I wait, but it's, you know, it's a, it's a well-rounded sure. approach. So when you think of the future of work, if you were to think of a word or a phrase that encapsulates the future of work in the next, I don't know, five, ten years, what word or phrase do you think would accurately describe where we're going? Um, I would say transparency. I think that we will see transparency in the type of work that's being done and the work that we're asking people to do. I can't think of anything else. Thank you very much for your You're time. Welcome. I really appreciate it. My pleasure. Yeah. Come anytime. So who are you and what do you do at SAP? I'm Adam Ali and I'm an account executive in the human capital management space for SAP. What is your perception of the workspace or how the workspace is changing? Uh, it's definitely changing and my perception is it getting increasingly better. So we're seeing a lot of you know, collaborative work environments, a lot of engagement from uh, you know, some of the social media team and, and a lot of the, the you know, leadership at the company. Yeah, so yeah. it's been great. Because you know, the stereotype of like a corporate office, everybody thinks it's just cubes and just like kind of the Dilbert style. Yeah. So after you were graduating college, did you think that when you, went to go, when you were gonna go work for a company that that's what you were gonna get? Is just kind of like a cubicle and a manager's just gonna come out and yell at you and tell you what to do? <laughs> or did you already have this perception of like an open space and that this is what it was gonna be like? Yeah, well, I was straying away from that. So when I was interviewing, I was looking for something that would fit you know, my needs and kind of the goal that I was looking to have in a career. Um, specifically at SAP, I found that um, with the interview process, we had a boot camp day where mm -hmm. we came in. We had probably 120 kids competing for you know limited amount of spots and seeing that environment, getting a taste of what the day in the life of the job would be, meeting some of the leadership, yeah. some of the sales executives, that gave me a good taste to understand that this was the right fit and this was the workspace that I was going to enjoy. And is your workspace more open or do you have cubes, semi-cubes? Obviously there's a lot of people that yeah. work at SAP so there are different different workspaces. Yeah. Well, what's your workspace like? It, it, it depends um, between offices. My specific workspace is in the Success Factors office in South San Francisco and it's a very open workspace. A lot of um, glass buildings you can write on the walls. Um, there's no there's no cubicle you can see the person right across yeah. from you for example so do you like good. that open space or would you yeah. you know do you sometimes want privacy and like you know stop looking at me I want to be on Facebook like I don't want you seeing my computer yeah uh, or do you like having that openness where you're in front of everyone yeah I, I mean I enjoy it and you know, it's easy to get you know resources buy-in from some of your colleagues and you know meet people especially being young the exposure is great um, when I do want to make a call or have that space, I can go into one of the virtual studios or one of the conference rooms that are more closed off. So it gives you a variety of you know open glass rooms, open workspace, or mm -hmm. closed, you know, very businesslike, which is also great. Uh, what do you think the workplace is going to look like in 10 years' time? Do you see any changes around office styles or management structures or how we're going to work? Yeah, definitely. I think it's going to be you know very mobile very social a lot of people are going to be working from home you know virtual engagement is going to be at a higher level through you know all the internet of things augmented reality um, I, I think it's going to be great um, it's definitely you know we're seeing that progression now so I think there's going to be a lot of change so who are you and what do you do at SAP uh, I'm Steve Ash and I'm responsible for the platform adoption program so I work with partners to help them promote HANA and I work with community to help expand a community of people who are using HANA. So you've been in the workforce for a while. Have you seen changes, you know, maybe since when you first entered the workforce to uh, oh your years at SAP? And if so, what, what sort of changes have you seen? Oh, wow. The, um, it's, a whole, it's a whole different paradigm in terms of like how things are, you know, are done and how communication happens. It's like, you know, 
when, I mean, now really dating myself, it's like when we came into, you know, when I came into the workforce, I mean, people worked off of, you know, memos. Yeah, you, you, know, you have like inner office memos, but you don't see those anymore, right? You know, so you have inner office memos, you kind of like send them around and people are kind of like supposed to respond to kind of typewritten messages and then everything kind of center around, centers around meetings where you have like these just massive reports that everybody kind of pours over. You know, now it's, you know, communication is just, yeah, instantaneous and, and just ever present, right? So you've got, you know, email communications, you've got phone communications, you've got, you know, Twitter and you got Jam and you've got Jam is our, our internal kind of like social media site. And then you have, you know, instant messaging and all these other things that kind of like just hidden from me from everybody. So so that, that's that been like the, the biggest, I think the biggest change, you know, kind of like through technology. Have you seen changes around, um how managers operate or how offices are designed? Yeah, the, um, so the way managers operate, particularly in, um, so like in the larger companies, like larger high-tech companies, you know, they have you know, a lot more you know, flexibility, but you know, it's just the, you know, people are kind of like uh, everywhere, right? So, yeah. so I have- Distributed. Are, yeah, they're distributed, thank you. So yeah, they're, you know, we've got, you know, I've had people like, in, in different companies work for me from like, like I said, literally all over the world. And so you have to manage, you know, in an environment where you've got people all over the world of different cultures and coming from different perspectives. Mm. And so that is a, that that becomes a challenge. I mean, it's not a challenge, it's a, I mean, there's, there's good and bad to it, right? So there's, um, the good is you get some interesting ideas and some really creative uh, um, perspectives from other cultures. Uh, but the challenge is, it's like, yeah, you, know, you have to be available, like around the sure. clock. And that's yeah. the, uh, and so that's so that so that's one of the changes, you know. And uh, and like I said, you know, yeah, you, know, you just have to be able to to work in that distributed environment, which is goes back to the communication stuff that I was saying. You have to be ready to you know respond and communicate in all these different uh, uh, different ways, you know, in terms of uh, making sure you're keeping in touch with people. So who are you, and what do you do at SAP? So I'm Lindsay. And I actually work with the Global Facility Management Team for the Americas. I am um, a project designer and I do design planning and project management oh. for the Americas. So now that you're actually designing these office spaces, did you think that when you graduated college you would be presented with cubicles and with kind of that Dilbert style mentality? And were you surprised that you weren't? I mean, no, I, I think that when I was in design school, we, you know, the designers that are teaching you are letting you know that the workplace is changing. Oh. And so we're instructed to select different types of furniture and learn about panel systems and everything like that, that is what a cubicle is. Um, but to think forward and mm. do something similar to kind of like what we're sitting in now. And then also what, um, you know, not even having panels. Where do you think things are gonna go over the next decade or so? Um, I mean, I really do think that because different people require different spaces, I don't see it all going to, you know, a no panel system or being the same workspace for everyone. There's different, you know, sales are on the phone a lot and uh, developers need space to be able to meet with their team and interact with their team and maybe move into smaller teams, move into larger teams. So I think the future is still going to have a lot of variety, which is what we do now, but it's creating a different type of feel that are still going to enable those workers that can be virtual to actually want to come to the office mm. and have a cool space to interact with their team. What do you think about millennials? So I'm, I'm I think, still you know, considered a yeah, millennial. Hey, me too. We're <laughs> in the same boat. Yeah, and I, I mean, I think what's interesting is that they do say like the me, me, me generation, but I actually read a really cool article um, that was like, we're not the me, me, me generation, it's the we, we, we generation, mm. you know? So when people are taking selfies and yeah, like doing yeah, yeah. all of those things, but then you're sharing it with everyone, you know? So it's like, I'm experiencing this right now, mm -hmm. but then I'm, I'm showing you what I'm experiencing. So it's almost like you get to experience it together. Mm. So um, I don't think it's the me, me, me generation. Um, I think it's the we generation and I we like, like to kind of pull things from each other to- I like that. Yeah. Uh, what advice would you give for uh, an employee, perhaps one of your peers or colleagues, not necessarily at SAP, but somebody at a similar point in their career, uh, such as yourself, 
that is looking to stay adaptable and relevant and to succeed in the world of work that we're seeing that's changing so quickly? I kind of think, I mean, this is kind of like a cheesy answer, but just to be yeah, true to who you are and what really makes you happy, yeah. because um, I think above above anything, if, if you're not happy with what you're doing, then you're not happy. I mean, we spend, Why bother doing it? Exactly. We spend so much time at work, and so... <laughs> yeah. You know, you, might as well, you have to enjoy what you're doing first. Yeah. And then, um, you know, of course, I agree that you should definitely be doing something towards making the world a better place, you know, if you can be involved with that yeah. as well. I just spent around two and a half, three hours on site at SAP's offices here in beautiful Palo Alto. It was really interesting to see their different office layouts. We spoke with some of their employees and their executives, and I think I know what SAP stands for. Super awesome people. Had a great time. That Jenny really is a Wonder Woman. Thanks for watching the Future of Work show. To sponsor an episode or to have your company featured in the show, email me jacob at thefutureorganization.com. I'll see you in the future.